Deepa Ramani, thank you so much for, for coming here today and telling us a story. Please tell us a little bit about your work and, and please tell us a story. So first of all, thank you. I'm Deepa from Bangalore. And uh, it's a privilege, honor to be on this platform, sharing the screen space with uh, all of you. <laughs> so I have been a teacher for most of my career, but since lockdown, uh, I have started exploring storytelling. And uh, since then, 2021, I have been uh, creating podcasts. So my podcast is Bachpan Ke Pitare. It's available on YouTube and uh, Spotify. And every day, every opportunity is a learning opportunity for me. And today has been a biggest opportunity. So starting with uh, Ambuja ma'am and then Vasanti ma'am, two different flavors. And <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but let, let me try. So to be a storyteller, be on the stage, I, we should learn to have control on our emotions and convey what we are supposed to convey. So let me begin with the story and I'll just connect a few things. Like Ambuja ma'am mentioned a strand in the hair, strand of hair in the garland, Lord's garland. And Vasanti ma'am uh, said, uh, called out the names of so many delicacies, right? Biryani and all that stuff. So this is the story of a combination of both. So this story comes from uh, West Bengal, which is one of the states in India. And uh, uh, long, long back when uh, kings used to rule the land and uh, the times when uh, humans, gods, creatures could change their forms as per their wish. This story comes from those times. So during those times when kings ruled the land, in some place in West Bengal, there lived a man named Partho. He was fond of eating food and his wife used to prepare so many uh, tasty dishes for him every single day. He was, he was particularly fond of machhir jhol, that is a fish curry in Bengali and dal bhat. Dal bhat is lentil with rice. So you'll be listening to a lot of uh, Bengali names uh, during this story. I'll be telling out the meanings of them. So he was particularly fond of so many things. So one fine day when he started having his lunch, it so happened that he saw a strand of hair in his rice. And he lost his appetite. He could not complete his meal. He got up. Next day, when he sits to have a meal, he sees something. Again, he leaves his food incomplete. And it happens in such a manner that every time he sits to have a meal, something or the other goes wrong. Something, either someone knocks at the door or something wrong happens and he is not able to finish his meal. He feels frustrated. He feels that anguish. He feels so desperate. He starts thinking, am I destined not to finish a single meal? Oh, what a fate. And the days passed by. One day, his wife came in very excited and said, she said, I should and he was like, I'm so excited. The king has invited all his subjects for a grand feast that he's going to lay out to celebrate the birth of his daughter, the birth of the princess of our kingdom. I'm so excited. Let's go. And Partho says, Na na, tumi jao. Me Ashpina. And the wife felt sad. Come on. Why do you think so? Nothing will happen. You will be able to eat your food. And somehow she persuaded him to go for the feast. The next day, when they reached the banquet hall in the grand palace, 
the aroma of the food fills his nostrils. There was a lavish spread that was spread out as a feast. Ilish machir chol, the fish curry. Alu poshto, a potato delicacy. Biryani luchi, luchi is a fried Bengali dish, a fried uh, Bengali uh, bread. Mishti doi son dish, dal, anything, everything, you name it and they had it. And the aroma was like, and the look of the delicious spread. It just made him drool. He wanted to eat each and everything. For the first time, he forgot about his bad luck. He, he couldn't finish a meal. The moment he sat down, he had his first bite. The second bite. The moment he had started just enjoying his meal, the server who was serving the meal, he lost his balance and a pot full of hot dal fell into Partho's plate. And he lost his appetite again. And he was like, now this spells the end of this meal. And the server was scared. Please, please forgive me, sir. I did not do it on purpose. Partho says, Ah, it's not your fault, my good man. That's okay. I am fated not to finish a meal. And the king, while this was happening, the heard Partho saying this. And he was curious. He came and he asked, What happened? Are you trying to say you have never had a meal? Yes, your majesty. Not in this lifetime I have ever been able to finish a meal. And the king, being the king, his ego was like, how dare, how come you say that? How dare does this happen to my su subject? Come tomorrow and I'll give you the feast of your life. And I'll make sure that you'll have the best meal of your life. And Partho couldn't say no to the king. So he said, okay, your majesty, I'll come. In his mind, he was like, there's no point going back again and just not able to finish the meal. But then he went back home and came back the next day. And when he came back, the feast was ready. Everything was up to the mark. The king personally was looking over all the preparations. And when Parthu entered, the king said, Parthu, each and every single morsel has been checked by my personal chef. And I ensure that you will have the best meal of your life. Parthu said, yes, your majesty. And he sat down to eat. He took one bite. Second bite, third bite, fourth bite and nothing was happening. And he started enjoying his meal and he started just, he could not relish, he could not stop himself from eating those uh, posto, alu posto or the fried brinjal and everything. And while he was enjoying his meal, there was someone up who did not like all this progress. Yes, you guessed it right. It was the fate or destiny as we might call it. <laughs> and the fate was thinking, what is happening at this rate if, it's high, if he continues? He'll be able to finish his meal. <laughs> and this will be against the destiny that I have written for him. I have to do something. The destiny thought for a while. And then it changed its form and turned itself into a tiny frog and plopped onto his split. <laughs> and you know, in India, particularly uh, those days, we still have it like that, but particularly we like to have our dal bath or the bath with our curries 
mix uh, mix it with hands and eat it with hands right we can form small laddus and eat it in our, with our hands so partha was just so excited to finish his meal and just that time when this little frog had plopped onto his plate the chief chef came to check if partha needed something and partha was so excited dono bahut dono bahut chef i'm so grateful you have prepared such delicious meal i am enjoying and i just cannot stop myself from eating all this thank you so much and his in his excitement he did not see anything and he got the lot and in went the frog <laughs> and partho relished everything that was there and he said okay and he got up said thank you to the king and king was also happy okay finally i have helped my subject to have at least one meal in his lifetime and partho happily started walking back to his home he started walking back to reach his home he had to cross a jungle so right in the middle of the woods when he reached he heard some sounds someone was calling his name partho partho and he looked here and there he did not find anyone he couldn't see anyone he was like i'm hearing something he started walking again and as he walked happily enjoying his walk he heard some sounds partho take me out and he was like just did like this and am i hearing sounds he looked here and there and now he was scared and he was confused it's a key who is it what do you want i am the fate i am calling from your stomach let me out and he was like just checking himself something has gone wrong did i eat something in the meal and before he could understand he said where are you i cannot see anyone you silly man i am the fate who entered your meal and you did not see me i entered your meal as a small frog and you have just gulped me inside i'm locked in your stomach now is that so thank you now do whatever you want i am happy you have had enough of it you have purposely just made my life you have created a lot of problems in my life be there i want to enjoy my meals and fate did not expect something like this to come from a human he said you silly human how dare you partho was now you are stuck in my stomach stay there i have had enough of it and he happily walked to his home and it hurt his ego and the fate thought mm, let me see how can you enjoy your meals i'll not allow you to enjoy the meals <laughs> and partho reached home he took some rest he was happy and his wife was happy to see him happy and at night when she called him for dinner i should not though come let's have some food now i'm feeling full i'm feeling somewhat uneasy and it was the time for surprise for his wife how come every time you come you always feel half you're always hungry how come you're feeling full is are you fine i think i ate too much let me have some rest maybe i can skip one meal and it was like she gave him a look and this made parthu think something but he just ignored it he slept had a nice nap good night sleep the next day when he woke up again his wife invited him for breakfast he again could not eat anything and this went on and now he started to worry what's happening is the fate correct he always felt full he could not eat a single thing all he could have was he could just swallow the rice water he could not eat anything the moment he ate he felt uneasy and this went on for days and days and now he was scared 
he was missing food and he was growing weak i cannot walk something is happening to me something i have to say sorry to this fate one fine day he says fate please god sorry sorry please forgive me ami khaga khama karo i was arrogant i want to it please come out of my body let me have something to eat hmm <laughs> you are thinking about yourself no i am in no mood to forgive you and actually the fate was not in a mood to forgive partho and mm, now do whatever you want you challenged me i have accepted the challenge <laughs> now partho really got worried because he was getting weaker by the day and he was trying to figure out some way to get out of the situation one fine day he thought okay let me climb up the hill see so he climbed up the hill and looked down and thought okay if i roll down the hill the jerks might force the frog to come out of my body and thinking this he started rolling down rolling down and down and the moment he reached the base but the frog was enjoying he did not come out of his stomach partho got hurt he checked himself checked his bones he was just crying he had tears in his eyes but the frog being adamant fate being fate partho just sat down for some time so that he could gather some energy to walk back to his home and he saw a pond nearby he just sat down sadly and watched the pond looking in the pond he saw some frogs jumping in and out of the pond as he sat there he realized something is going on he he realized that the frogs were jumping out of the pond and he woke up to some new idea he grew he grew wise to know the fact that frogs wanted water to live and he was seeing because the pond did not have much of water left the frogs were jumping out of the water he had a smile on his face he he, grew, he he gathered some energy and he walked back home with a cool mind he knew what he wanted to do when he reached back his wife asked him for water nana ami jol no khabo i am not going to drink water i am fine let me sleep i have got hurt so he went back to sleep because he was too tired and he had got hurt he slept for a couple of hours at night when he woke up his wife still asked him at least have some water eat something he said no no i will rather die than drink water or have anything at all now frog had started feeling uneasy because partho had not eaten or not had water for a long time partho what's going on outside and partho was you will know soon and he went back to sleep again the whole night he slept but by next day morning the frog had started feeling suffocating he had started suffocating he called out partho drink water drink water the everything is drying up let me out of the drink water partho was no i would rather die me jol na khabo and he did not drink oh it was time for destiny or the fate to request him since some time he started partho please let me out of the body drink something partho said unless and until you promise me you won't bother me again i won't let you out i won't drink water and destiny had to approve of his request the destiny said okay i promise partho again confirmed it shakti you will not bother me again oh i promise drink something for my sake and then partho drank a glass of water he felt better are you sure you're going to come out again he asked the frog yes yes i will come out he drank some more water quenched his thirst and the moment he was 
fine, he drank a lot of water. In some time, he puked and out came the frog. And the moment the frog came out, he turned itself into the god of destiny and vanished. And from that time till that time, Partha was alive on this earth. He never had any problem with his meals. He enjoyed his meals every single day. And that was Partho. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It was wonderful. <laughs> Very strong storytelling tonight, everybody. What a deep, really, what, what attracted you about that story? What part of that story do you especially connect with? I connect with the fact that we human beings can write our own destiny. And this is what my father always used to say. We write our destiny on our own. So just try it hard. Sometime, someday, we will succeed. And this is what he challenged God. <laughs> that was something that attracted me. Hmm. Anyone else? Any thoughts? Comments, questions? Deepa, uh, Deepa I really uh, laugh loudly uh, many times. Um, uh, it, I, I can say one thing. The way, the different way, uh, different style of your laughing made our day today. <laughs> uh, you proved yourself. Uh, the way you smiled in different situations uh, show uh, the strength of your storytelling. Uh, I loved it. Thanks so much for the Thank story. You. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Actually, Deepa, I really appreciate you for raising up to the storytelling thing. That was like one thing really, really impressed me. Like you beautifully switched over from how you were before starting the story after listening to Vasanthi Imam's story. And, uh, um, and you did full justice to the story. And as you said in the beginning, you should not be taken over by the emotions. I think like you did a very good job. I loved And today looks like, no, it's, it's a day of delicacies. And uh, we are listening to lots of delicacies, feeling very hungry. Enjoy listening to the story. Thank you. Thank you. It's a surprise for me as well. I never expected myself to get into the storytelling mood. Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for me, I've been, we have been doing so many uh, sessions. So uh, for me, this is the best of what you have done. So happy and loved all the modulations and we were truly glued to it, enjoying, laughing, going along with the story. So thank you. Thank you, my partner. Smina and I collaborate a lot. <laughs> yes, well, the, the, of course, the modulations were there, but as I always say, the modulations should be at the service of acting. And this was the case for you. Uh, there, it was not a technical uh, demonstration. It was, it was from the heart. It means a lot coming from you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, anybody else want to say anything? Uh, yeah, I would like to say that in Tamil, there is a famous proverb, Didiye Madhyal Vellala. So I just wanted to quote it here, which means we can win over the fate through our, you know, intelligence. So that's up to you, Deepa. This is lovely. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, uh, Nina, are you ready? Yeah. And uh, Tanya, we're, we're just a little behind schedule. Is it okay? Uh, are, it's okay. There's no time problem. For you? Is it okay, Tanya? It's okay, good. You're on mute, but that's okay. But I'm glad it's okay. Okay, so um, Nina, uh, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to enlarge your image for me, but um, for everyone, uh, it, it's in gallery mode. If you want to uh, enlarge the storyteller's image, you can do so on your own. And Nina, please, if you like, move somebody's image up near the camera who you think is especially a good listener. And we'll begin in just a moment. 
Nina Garish, thank you so much for joining us today. Please um, tell us about your work and, and please tell us a story. Yeah. So good evening all. I'm Nina Girish, a school librarian turned storyteller and podcaster. So happy to be part of this storytelling. So I'll begin with the story without any delay. Often uh, we have in India, the story that I'm going to tell today is a Japanese folk, uh, folklore. So that has a connect with uh, some of our rituals in India. Like in India, we have Nam Karan, you know, where you take out the words or alphabets and all those things. So the same way, uh, long back in Japan, there was a, a ritual. Like uh, if a boy, especially if the first child is a boy, then the parents are happy to, you know, name them. And it was not a small name. It was a long name. Big name. The story is all about the boy with a long name. Now let's see what the long name was and what are the after effects of the long name. There was a farmer and his wife uh, who were, you know, the parents to be. And as any parent in that area, they were also eager to know whether the, you know, the child born to them is a boy or a girl. And the first born boy is always special for them. All, it was a ritual there. And of course, they have to look for the long name. And thus, they started inquiring here and there, you know, asking people uh, what, uh, what kind of name can be given. And of course, the meaning of name also matters. So finally, they, come, they came up with a name, a long name. And the meaning of the name was the most beautiful thing in, on the earth. And the name... Do you know what it was? Tiki tiki tembo, ro no sa, rembo, chari bari, ruchi, pip peri, pembo. Such a long name. One could rhyme the name. Tiki tiki no sa, rembo, chari bari, ruchi, pip peri, pembo. And after a year, the woman, she gave birth to another child. Now, as for the ritual, only the first born child should be named Tong Lin. Now, the second child was just named Pip. Now, after the children started growing, the farmer and his wife, they went to the farm and there was a big well there. So, as any normal parent, as we do, they will want Pip. And one more thing, let me tell you. They, it was not just giving the long name. There was one more ritual to be followed. That's nay, the child when called should be given respect. The name should be given respect and the full name has to be called out. You can't just tell Tiki Tiki Rembo. The full name has to be. Otherwise it's called like, you know, it's objection. And now what happened? When they reached the farm, the parents want the children, listen, don't go near the well. You know what will happen? So we are working and stay away, play as long as you want to. Kids are kids. And now what they did? They were so curious, especially the elder one. Pip, pip, come, let's go. Now they went near the well and started peeping inside how deep the well was. Now Pip was not happy. He climbed up the wall and lo, third came a noise. Pip fell down the well and was, you know, beating his hands. Help, help. Now, tiki tiki rumba, no sa, chari, bari, pip, peri, pembo. Had no choice. Mother, 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 he's running and going towards his mother. And, Mom, Pip has fallen into the well. Now, mother and father, what? When? How did this happen? We want you not to go. Now, who was the one person whom they could approach because nobody was expert to going down the well and getting someone out. Then they remembered the old man up in the hill. Now, who will go and call him? The old man was the only person who could come down and help a person inside the well. Now, Pip had to run along the mountain. Now, remember, climbing the mountain was not that easy. Pip started climbing. Though the climb was good in the beginning, and Les started huffing and puffing. 
and then reached. Finally, when he reached, knock, knock, knock. Now the old man opened the door, and let me tell you, the old man couldn't hear properly. You have to speak louder. Now Pip went huffing and puffing. He said, "Uncle, uncle, please come down. We need your help." What? What happened? Now Pip said. Uncle, please come. My brother is in trouble. My brother Pip has fallen into the well. Please come down. We need your help. Who is it? Now the old man picked up his equipment and started running. Now running down the slope was very easy. Tuck, 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 tuck. They started running, reached the well, and the old man started putting the ladder into the well. And slowly he went down, picked up Pip. And out was the child. Now, after coming out, he started pushing, pressing his stomach, and the water started puking and puking. And finally, the child sat up and was looking at his parents. There was a guilt in his eyes because what they did was not right. But still, the parents didn't say anything. They were so happy that the child was back, and thus they went back. Now, for a week. Both of the children never dared to go near the well. But what happened after a week? Gone all those memories. No more, you know, fear. Now this time they went to the farm with their parents, holding kites. Now it was time to fly the kites. And again, this time what happened? They were flying the kite, and they were just, you know, a race. Like who would soar the kite so high? Now. Tiki Tiki, Rambo, Nosa, Pip, Perry, Pembo, Chari, Hari was the one who was excited to stand up on the wall of the well and fly the kite high. And when he went up, this height, third, he went back down. Now remember the rich. Of taking the free hand experience of falling into the well, knew what it was to be inside the water, and towards his mother, father, my brother, Tiki, Tiki. Mother was like, "Pip, this is not good. Respect your brother's name. Call him by his full name." No, he was like, "Mama, Mama, Tiki, Tiki, Remba, Nosa, Chari. Come on, Pip." Tell the full name, unless other otherwise we won't we don't want to hear. Then again, finally the child said, "Tiki tiki remba no sa chari pe peri pembo jembo." He has fallen into the well. What? When? Now again the old man up the hill. This was this time it was Pip who had to run and fall the old man. Now he started running, running, running. Finally he reached. Knock, 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 knock. The old man opened. Yes, who is it? Uncle, uncle, please come down. Last time, remember, you helped me come out of the well. Now this time, my brother, Tiki Tiki Ramban, who's a charming body, big peri pembo has fallen into the well. Please come, help. What? Now again, the old uncle was not able to hear. Now he, on top of his voice, dragged the full name, and finally. After an hour's fight, the old man understood what he had to do. Picked up his things again. They started running, 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 running. They reached the well. Now again, he put the rope ladder inside the well. Went down. Now this time, he picked up the boy. Remember, he was there for a long hours inside the water. Now it was hard time for them. Anything could have happened. Now the boy was brought out. They tried pushing. Puffing everything they did, the water he puked water, but he was not coming back to normal. Now the parents and the old man and the brother they were all panicked. What will happen now? After a long effort, finally the boy came to his senses, but not as you know as good as he could. It took months for the boy to recover. Now this was a big lesson for the people. In that village, in that area, because see, to follow the ritual, and you know, you are giving a big name. Now, when you are in trouble, the same ritual is 
a trouble for all of them. Now they promised whatever happens. See, it was like, you know, giving, differentiating between the first born and the second born, giving them small name and the first born, uh, you know, long name. Now they promised never ever in our life we will be naming such big names to our kids because the other ritual of calling out the whole name, it took almost took the life of the boy. And that's how now the child born, whether it's the first one or the second one, boy or girl, was always named a small name. And that's how the story ends here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderfully told. Well, I, I also want to ask you, what, what about that story really attracted you? Yeah, the, as I told in the beginning, uh, this was the first story as an individual storyteller when I started. I did for a school. And that time also, I wanted to carry forward this message to the students that many times we follow rituals. It's good to follow our rituals. But at times, we should uh, see how practical they are. So this was one thing that always was there in my mind. And we always, you know, Naam uh, Karan, as we say in Hindi, uh, it happens. And uh, one more thing that attracted me is like, uh, when we talk about gender wise, see the first born boy is given a long name. Why not the first born girl? So all these things were there in my mind when I took up the story. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Comment? Question? Uh, yes, Eric. Uh, Ambuja here. I couldn't switch on the video. I uh, loved your uh, narration, especially the energy with which you told you were enjoying the story while you were telling. That made the story even more uh, lovely to listen to. Thank, thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Means a lot. I've always loved this tiki tiki tembo, noza rembo. <laughs> Such a big name. Hats off for to you to remember that long name. It's you get uh, it gets mixed up many times, and I think uh, folklore are something that uh, we can adapt as per you know our audience. I personally don't attempt this story just because I'm not able to remember that long name, <laughs> but beautifully narrated. Every time she was telling the name, no, it was like, you know, while you're waiting for a sixer or a four to go, is she going to complete the name? Is she going to complete the name? And thank you, Usha ma'am. I know uh, Usha ma'am, this is one of her favorite stories. I've heard her, you know, long back. So thank you so much. And uh, one experience I would like to share here, I tried this story in Tamil, okay, choosing a Tamil name and trying the everything changing into Tamil setting and all. It went on well, but one feedback I received from one of the senior tellers is when something is uh, specific to a particular culture, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't uh, suit well when it is tried for another culture. And I have never told the story again um, after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, whether it's right or wrong, but just got reminded of that when you were uh, telling yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Well, that story is from Japan? Yeah. So, it's a Japanese folklore. So, Ambuja, what do you what do you feel is especially Japanese about that story? Um, the concept of having lengthy names. Hmm. That was what was told to me. I mean, by whomever advised me not to do that in Tamil. So, uh, that was what's told because... In Japanese folklore, there is this concept of having long names, hmm. uh, but that is not there in Tamil culture as far as we know. Well, uh, I mean, it depends on like how each person perceives, but I just uh, got reminded of that when you were telling this, but I loved your narration, Nina. It was wonderful. Great. Well, thank you again, Nina. That was wonderful. Uh, yeah, Nina, that was really wonderful. Um, I tried the story for children and made this tiki tiki memo, nusa, rembo, chari, bari, nuchi, pipari, pembo as a tongue twister 
and I made every, mm. everyone to say that. So I made it as a funny story. So yeah, so, yeah that was, it reminded me of that. And yours is a very awesome narration, uh, uh, you know, bringing in the rituals and all that. Yeah, it was very good. I enjoyed this story, listening again. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. This is this is Nagesh Rao. Uh, related to the same story, there was a another name like naming the first child with lengthy name. Uh, they keep the name of the grandfather, great grandfather, great great grandfather. So they call them politely with the same name so that they remember the all the generations of previous names behind that actually. Otherwise, they'll name the Girl also the same. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. For a wonderful story. Thank you, sir. Uh, Actually, that is what I try, not the lengthy name. My story was like this person's uh, son, this person's son. I mean, five generations. So I changed the concept to the son has to be called with the five generation names. So very good. Okay, our final storyteller of the day. Uh, now we have 27 people in this session, but only six of us have our cameras on, which is okay. Uh, oh, thank you, Rahini. Um, so uh, let's see. I, uh, Tanya, I'm going to enlarge your image just for the, for the recording, but uh, for you, um, as I've been saying, you, you might wanna move your image down to the bottom and uh, move anyone who seems to be a good listener, uh, move their image to the top under the camera. See, in a, in a theater, the person who is front row center uh, is the primary audience member. But in Zoom, it's the top row center uh, because the uh, speaker can look in the camera and see that person almost at, at the same time. So, Tanya, you have been a great listener for this whole session. Uh, I want to thank you for being such a wonderful listener. And um, now, just a moment, I'm going to get ready here. Yes. So, um, uh, Tanya Kotari, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Bulgaria. So, please, I understand you're going to tell us a Bulgarian folktale. Yes. So, so please uh, introduce yourself fully. Tell us about your work and, and please tell us a story. Uh, my name is Tanya. Uh, I'm, I have an Indian husband. That's why my family name is Kutari. And uh, I love uh, storytelling, but uh, I never did this professionally. And uh, I want to learn that because I feel it as a call to try to make the Bulgarian, uh, traditional Bulgarian folk tales more popular and probably to give them a better sounding to the uh, people nowadays or something like that. Wonderful. Because uh, It's a privilege to hear a, a Bulgarian folk tale from a Bulgarian person. Now, I want to really encourage you to look into the camera because Oops. then we will feel the eye contact. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The name of the story is uh, about um, the girl called Bogdanka. So it starts like that. Not so long time ago, in the house of a shepherd and his wife, a little baby girl was born. The parents named her Bogdanka, which meant a gift from God. One day, the mother was keeping the girl in her hands. looking at her beautiful smile and the uh, soft and gentle skin on her arms, thinking, my dear daughter, what kind of life you're going to give you? You're bringing us so much joy. 
but still our life is very hard. I'm afraid when you live with us, you will need to complete and to continue our life, which is so, so difficult. I'm so young, still, still young, but I feel so tired. You look, my mother told me she was teaching that I need to work a lot and marry for love. And this will be enough to find my happiness. And I did it and I'm still doing, but it seems like it's not working. I wish that your life will be different, my child. You look, who is happy in this world? You look at the rich people. They don't do anything. They just sit in front of the fireplace and the servants are going around, bringing them everything, fulfilling their wishes. They must be happy. And I want this life for you. How we can do it? Yes, I can do this for you. Yes, I can do it. But then, when you grow up, you're going to marry. You will find a poor shepherd and you will repeat my life. No, 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 this is not going to happen. I have to do something about it. Yes, I will keep you at home. I will not allow anyone from this village to marry you. And then one day someone will come from abroad and he will see you. He will see how beautiful you are. He will fall in love and he will take you there. And then you will be happy. He will fulfill all your wishes. And then all my hard work will be paid off. Yes. So she was ready with her plan. The only thing was to convince her husband. And she knew how to do that. In the evening, when her husband came, she was ready. She had prepared a wonderful dish. She put the table. She made him sit com comfortably. And she started talking. While he was enjoying his favorite meal, she first asked him, What is... Uh, how was your day today, my, my dear? Whom you met? What happened? And then she asked, do you remember when you were young, how you were dreaming of traveling, of doing different things? Oh, of course I remember, he said. But you see what happened after we married? We started repeating the life of our uh, parents and it's only work morning to evening, nothing else. This is the life, said the husband. But don't you want this life to be different for our daughter? I want, but how we can do it? Then she told him all her plan. She, he thought a little bit and he said, look, I don't know, you are a woman, you may be no better than me what a good life for a woman should be. So, yes, I agree. I will follow your plan. And then the mother happily weaved a beautiful carpet out of the wool, which they were collecting from the ships and put her daughter to sit on that carpet in front of the fireplace. And they taught their daughter two words. One was, Utmang, when she feels hot in front of the fire. So the parents were dragging the carpet away near to the window where she can take fresh air. 
and if she feels cold, she had to shout, Primak! And then they were dragging her back uh, near to the fireplace. Her mother was combing her hair, giving her food with the spoon in the mouth. And she was feeling so happy that whatever she's doing, it doesn't matter if she has to work double or triple, one day her daughter will be happy and she will have a good life. Days were passing. The girl was sitting near the fire, looking into the flames, trying to understand what the fire is trying to explain her. And the fire was speaking. When she felt hot, she was shouting, Utmak! And then the parents were coming, drag dragging her near the window. Then from the open window, she was listening to the voice of the wind. And the wind was bringing a faraway song, sounding like that. Mm -hmm. The words of the song are saying what kind of flower you are. Are you a tulip or hyacinth or rose? And she was looking outside, looking at the kids playing, thinking, what is the answer to this question? Why my parents are not allowing me to go and play with the other kids? Am I so bad? If my name is Bogdanka, what is my gift I'm bringing to my parents? I should be a gift from God to them. So days and years were passing and the girl grew up. Everybody listened about the beautiful girl living in the house, just looking from the window and never going out. So they were curious. They wanted to see her. Maybe if she's beautiful, she, they could take her as a wife of their sons. So they were coming and talking to the parents. The mother proudly was showing her daughter from the window and explaining to them, you look, our daughter is not like the others. She never worked. We didn't teach her. If you take her in your house, you need to do what we, whatever we did with her. You have to fulfill every her wish and she will only sit in front of the fireplace. And she knows these two words. And when she shouts them, you need to uh, drag her away and near to the fire. When the people hear this, they were just uh, running away, terrified. They were saying, oh, we don't want this kind of lazy girl in our house. But the mother was happy because her plan was working. So she was waiting. She was sure one day that boy will come and he will bring her daughter away to her new and happy life. And that happened. One day in the village came a plowman with his cart and he heard about the beautiful girl. And he was curious and he came to see her from the window. And when he saw her, he fell in love and he immediately 
went to talk to the mother. And she told him about her condition. You have to take care of her as we did till now, she said. I promise, I promise. Just give her to me, please, he said. I will do everything what you are asking. Okay, he may be not very rich, said the mother, but at least he has a cart and he promised he will take care of her as we do. So she agreed. At that time, they were not making big marriages. There was no, there was no need. So the girl just took her carpet, rolled it up and sat in the cart with the boy. And when they off for his village and their new life, when they reached in his house, it was already late. It was dark at night. And uh, they went immediately to sleep. In the morning, the new husband put the fire in the fireplace and he put his new bride to sit in front of it on her carpet. And while he was going out, he said to the carpet, When I come back in the evening, I will be very tired and hungry. So please, you have to take care and prepare our dinner. Because my um, wife will only sit here next to the fire. So he waved to his, his wife and he went out of the house. And the girl was sitting in front of the fire. That fire was not friendly. The sound was very scary. And when she felt hot, she started shouting, Otmak! Otmak! No one was there. Nobody listened. Nobody came. So she looked left and right. She decided, okay, maybe I need to do this myself. She stand up, dragged the carpet away and went near to the window. Looking outside, the window was also not there. A rain was falling and it was so depressing and scary. She decided maybe better to go back near to the fire again, shouting, Primak, Primak. Nobody here, nobody came to help her. So she said, okay, I did once, once uh, I, I know how to do it. Let me do it my, by myself. And she went again near to the fireplace. After some time, she felt hungry and she asked the carpet, don't you hear what my husband asks you? Isn't it time for you to start cooking? When he comes back, he will be hungry. No. The carpet didn't move, didn't answer, didn't do anything. It was just the carpet. Soon after that, the husband came back and he asked, Where is my dinner? Uh... There is no dinner, I'm sorry. How? You didn't remind the carpet to cook it? I, I did, I, I, I'm I, telling you, I, I promise I said to the carpet so many times, but it didn't move. But I'm hungry and I'm angry now, said the husband. And he was so angry that he took the carpet and he put it at the back of his wife. And then he took one stick and started hitting at the carpet. And then Bogdanka started shouting, Please, what you are doing? It's painful. You are hitting the carpet, but I feel pain. Bear it, woman, he said. I'm hitting the carpet because it needs to know whom to listen. That's why it is on your back. They all said... went to sleep hungry that night. The next morning, 
everything repeated the same way all the day. And the third morning, Bogdanka was looking on the window and she was thinking, come on, for a last time I'm telling you, Carpet, you have to stand up and do something. I don't want to be beaten anymore because of you. Then the carpet didn't reply again. And she was so angry and she decided she needed to find another way. She ran away from the house and she started knocking on the doors of the neighbors. There was no door to open, but she didn't stop. She continued knocking and knocking left and right. And then suddenly one of the doors opened and there was standing an old woman. And she invited her to go inside. And there, there were other women and young girls and they were making bread together and cooking meals. They saw, they understood she is hungry, so they gave her some food. And she asked them how she can help for that. And they started teaching her what she can do to prepare her own meal. In the evening, when her husband came at home, he felt a smell of a food in the house. When he entered, he asked, Oh, the carpet listened to you finally. No, she said, he didn't listen. But I find my way. And this continued the next day and the next day. And after a few days, her mother came to visit her and she asked, How is the life going, my child? Are you, is your husband keeping his promise? Is he taking care of you as we do, as we did with your father? No, she said. And she told her what happened. And when she reached through the stick moment, her mother said, no, I don't want to listen to this anymore. You stupid girl. You're just wasting your life. And you wasted all our work, hard work with your father. Now you're taking your luggage and you're coming back with me. So she rolled up her carpet and she went after her mother. But on the door, her husband was just coming back and he asked, Where are you going? The mother was angry. She told him, I'm taking my daughter back. You lied to me. And she tried to argue with him, but he didn't answer anything. He just entered inside the house and he said, Bogdanka, where is my dinner? I'm tired and I'm hungry. So she took the round bread which she baked in the house of the old woman and she gave to him. He broke that bread on two pieces and he gave her one of the pieces. The other he kept for himself. The mother was sitting and looking at them and then she asked, And me? And what about me? Then he looked at her and he said, You know, with your golden mouth you deserve a golden food. And he went to the barn and felt and filled one back with straw and bring it to the mother. And he said, this is going to be your dinner. Eat it. The mother was furious. She said, I'm never going to step in that house again. And she went off. She came back at her house and asked her husband to go and bring the daughter back because she is wasting her life there. They becoming a servant. The next day, the father went to meet his daughter and he asked her, Dear child, 
Tell me, is that true what your mother is saying? Are you really, really suffering here? What is going on with you? The daughter said, You know, it was difficult. It was very scary. In the beginning, I was very angry because I didn't know what to do. But now I feel like I started finding my way and I want to try to make my life. I'm choosing to stay here. Then her father smiled and he said, Okay, if, if this is your choice, I respect it. Maybe then you can take this copper vessel with water and go and bring your husband on the way. He must be thirsty. And she did so. And when she met her husband on the way with the vessel of water, he asked her, You never did this before. How you know that I'm coming and I'm thirsty? She said, You know, my father is there. He taught me to do that. He drank the water and then together they entered into the house. They had a meal with the father together and the husband said, Dear father, that carpet was very beautiful what you brought from, your, from the house, but his place is not on the ground. Its place is now on the window here, just in front on the wall, just in front of the window. So even people, the people who are passing on the street, they could see it because the colors are so vibrant and so colorful and beautiful. So he gave a gift to the father and he sent him home. And the girl continued her way, going to the house of the old women and enjoying the life with the other women together because during the day they were singing songs and they were playing. Because in the Bulgarian tradition, we have very beautiful songs and dances too. And then one day, she went, she decided that it's time to go and visit her parents. When her mother saw her on the door, she started crying and saying, My poor girl, I feel so sorry. I left you there helpless, spoiling your life. Please forgive me. But the daughter was looking at her and saying, Mother, dear mother, for what to forgive you? You know, in the beginning, I was angry. I was really angry because I felt helpless. But of course, I forgive you because you did, if you didn't give me the chance to stand in front of the fireplace and learn the lessons of the fire, I would never understand that whatever you are running from, it's always coming after you. And if you didn't let me stay in front of the window and listen to the songs of the wind, I would never search for the flower which is my own. And you know, when I found the women here, they taught me, that even if no flower if has if, even if a flower has no smell it always has a gift to the world and of course i will forgive you because as a wife of a shepherd the best thing you could do was to protect me but as a wife of a plowman I understood that not only sun and water and wind are important for the plant to grow, but the most important it of it is the earth. And as a wife of a plowman, 
I'm going to give freedom to my daughter and to my child, to every my child. And I really hope that if I do any mistake, they're going to forgive me for that because whatever was my intention was to give them, to do my best for them. And that is the end of the story. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. It's a delicate story in the sense that um, we we lose sympathy for the husband when the husband is beating her. Uh, but then it turns out he's not really bad. And uh, at least he doesn't beat her directly, right? He only beats the carpet. But of course, he's, he's also beating her. So we lose sympathy for him, but, um, but, but not completely. Uh, usually that version of the story, nowadays, that version of the story is forgotten. And it's more popular, the retelling of an uh, author like 100 years old retelling of that story, which is um, bringing a little bit uh, softer version when the girl is going to the house of the husband and there all the family of his is also meeting her and everybody is um, working and helping each other, but she only sits in front of the fireplace and nobody is asking to do anything but when they sit to eat together they don't give her food and when somebody asks the old father the father of the husband why he is not uh, sharing the food with the girl he says that only people who work they are hungry and uh, if she doesn't work that means she is not hungry so that's why he is not giving her food. And then after three days, she stands up and she starts doing whatever everybody else is doing so she could be there together with them. And this is something which I feel it is very much into the um, feeling of the Bulgarians. So the Bulgarian people, they believe that only hard work can make you valuable for the for the society and i feel that this is something which need to change because not only hard but working smart or something like that will be a better way yes and the story points out that um the daughter is grateful that she had that time of um of, of comfort and meditation so she could learn from the fire, she could hear the song from the wind. So there, there were some uh, benefits from, from the mother's approach. Yes, I believe so. But in the end, uh, a compromise was called for. It should be. I believe that also the balance should be there. I, I think that the mother lost her... Uh, joy of the life because of only focusing on the duties which she has and the girl saw the difference with the people in the other village when they were not only working but also enjoying the songs and the folk dances they had so the, so the mother had good intentions but um it but yeah, it turned out there needed to be more of a balance. Yeah. Anybody else? Any thoughts, comments, questions? Yeah. Uh, so it was like a soft flow of, uh, you know, the story was so soft. And the way you sang uh, and uh, the concept that was there in the story, you know, wherever we are, whether it is uh, Asia or any continent, 
uh it is the same like you know mostly if you see it, today's generation where you see the parents being very pampered like you know nothing should even there shouldn't be a burn on your hand you know keeping them in a cocoon and at the end there is somebody to teach them how to come out of the cocoon so mm -hmm. it was wonderful listening to your story and and wonderful learning how to you know softly narrate a story without making lots of noise thank you so much thank you Uh, exactly you. that's what i felt uh, i mean whatever nina nina actually spoke my mind like such a strong uh, theme like you told it in a very soft way so it's a great learning for me actually i mean uh, very nice lovely and as she said um, i always believe like we all come from the same alma mater like wherever we are the basic emotions are all the same so that is how we connect with each other lovely danya like um, I think it's a perfect story to end this uh, session with. Thank you. Yes, the the soft and gentle telling was was very effective, yes. and uh, I always say that video conferencing is a very intimate medium, because uh, we are all just a few twelve inches away from uh, the image of the person we're talking with, so it's uh, you know it, it we're really very close to each other. Uh, it's a very different thing than being on a stage where you are really you have to kind of announce everything and project everything much further. Video conferencing is much more uh, personal, and the way you told really really brought that out. You know, I think part of the issue is that um, the mother wanted to be royalty. If if she really was a queen. uh it would be appropriate that the princess would just sit in front of the fire but unfortunately the the mother was not a queen uh and uh, her daughter was not a princess so um so the so the daughter had to uh, adjust to the uh, to the to the class reality she was in uh but as it turned out the daughter was was happy to adjust the especially she she found joy and comfort in cooking with with all the uh, other women in the uh, in the village with where she was living with her husband yeah and uh, i think that what is important is that uh, there should be somebody who give you a hand when you are in need this is something which uh, is also i think it's needed to have in the stories mm -hmm. and she uh, she reached out at a certain point she yes. Uh, yes. she gave up on the carpet and she went out to the neighbors mm. yeah well it's a complex story you know because uh many times you want to have a good guy and a villain uh but but this story is more complex than that and yeah. in our yeah mm -hmm. in our culture culture we say that story just to point out that the laziness is something bad and you don't need to do it so for me i learned i hear a bulgarian storyteller who gave a question what was the reason so for me that is the reason for a mother to do all this so that's why i added the um the thoughts of the mother in the beginning and then the thoughts of the daughter at the end because this is how i would like to to finish i i yes. wish that all the mothers uh, who are having a good intention but uh it doesn't uh, work well to be forgiven Yes, I know some versions of this story. The title is "The Lazy Girl." Yeah, the lazy girl. Or the girl. girl who was spoiled. But I'm mm, glad yes. you didn't give that title because um, it's not that she's lazy. It's that the mother, in her fantasy life, she wants to be queen and she wants her daughter to be a princess. Mm. Uh, and she gives a you know beautiful experience to her daughter, uh, listening to the fire, listening to the wind. uh but it could not be sustained because uh it was a fantasy so the daughter adjusted and uh and 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 did did well 
Yeah, and I hope that the daughter of the daughter will do better. Okay. Uh, everybody should know that Tanya is uh, involved in a larger project to tell a number of stories uh, to really give a full picture of the Bulgarian identity. This particular story is about a mother and a daughter uh, in Bulgarian culture, uh, but she's also working on other historical stories with the aim of giving a full picture of um, the Bulgarian character and identity. It's a big project. Um, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Shall we? Uh, uh, shall we? Um, oh, Janet is, has written. Please bring us more. Very good. We will keep everyone posted. Okay. Shall oh. we? Uh, shall we? Oh, who was that? It's a. This doctor. is Bogdanka. Oh, it's a tradition uh, the Bulgarian doll. Yeah, I prepared that doll yesterday. Uh huh. Very good. For one uh, other storytelling which I had here in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. My first, actually, uh, storytelling for adults. Great. Yeah, I really thought, do I need to prepare a doll for adults? But uh, I wanted to have it as a my first Bulgarian uh, traditional doll for that story. Well, you did a great uh, storytelling for adults today. I mean, I, I think that story was also good for, for young people, but um, uh, it was told for adults and, and uh, I think very well received. Thank you. Okay, shall we say good, good night and good morning uh, for now? Yes. Very good. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Thank you, Thank Tanya. You. Okay. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. Well done, Tanya. Really. Uh, I think you'll enjoy the recording. I'm trying to find a way to, uh, well, okay, first I'm going to stop the recording. Mm-hmm.